So our next job is going to be to scale our cube to the correct values and then add our first leg. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to set the Z value here to 0.1 and press enter. This is a good starting point for the base of our table. Next, we need to add a join geometry node and a transform node to create our first leg. So I'm going to hold down shift and a search for transform and pop it about here. Then hit shift and a again, search for join, join geometry, plug this in here and then plug this transform node just below. Next, we're going to connect this transform node at the bottom to this geometry output like so. So what we can see here is predominantly this transform, this instance. We need to adjust these values. So we're going to set the X value to 0.1, the Y value to 0.1 as well. What I want to do next is rather than manipulate the translation values from this transform node directly, I want to use another vector math node. So I'm going to take our vector math node here, hit shift D and position down here. I'm going to change this to subtract and plug it into our translate option. From here, I can manipulate values at the bottom to manipulate the positioning of this leg on the X, Y and Z axes. Now, this is where things get a little bit tricky. What we basically want from our object here is the ability to scale the object, but keep the leg positioned in a specific area. So we want to position this leg, for example, in perhaps this corner or maybe this corner. And we want it to remain in that corner regardless of how we scale the object. To do this, we need to link this scale node with this subtract node so that we effectively use the same values for each. We can do this by using a different node known as the combine XYZ node. I'm going to hold down shift and then press A, go search and type combine and it gives us two options, combine RGB and combine XYZ we're going to choose combine XYZ and position here. We're going to take this vector output and plug it in here for the scale and also plug it in here for subtract. It's important not to forget the basic rule that any node connections on this side of a node can be connected to multiple inputs. So everything that you see on this side of the node, like this point here, this is an output for this node. You can create multiple noodles for a single output. So for example, we've got two links here. We can add as many more as we want. So I can plug it in here and here, for example. However, inputs can only ever have one connection. So I can't, for example, take this transition value here and attempt to plug it into anything else. If I attempt to take this vector and plug it into the transition, it simply replaces it. So keep that basic rule in mind. Meanwhile, we have a cube that has once again disappeared. So we need to set these values to one on the X one on the Y and 0 0.1 on the Z. So now we're making a bit of progress, but the positioning of the leg still isn't quite right. Not to worry though, because we can manipulate that here. So I'm going to reduce the values for the subtract vector to 0 0.2 on the X. We'll go 0 0.2 on the Y and we'll use a value of one for the Z. And now if we take a look, we can see that we've got the base of our table 
as well as a single leg. Now, what does that mean for the objects at the moment? Just how procedural is this? Well, let's find out by manipulating the combine XYZ node. So if we were to adjust the X value, you can see if I just navigate my view, that we are able to increase the scale of our base. But as we increase the scale of the base, you'll notice that the leg moves at the same rate that the object expands. What you will also notice as we increase the value on the x-axis is that even though the base of the table is being scaled, the actual dimensions of the leg we have created remain the same. It's just being moved. Compare this to the traditional scaling of the object on the x-axis. If we hit S then X to scale, you can see that we are still able to scale the base on the x-axis. But now we are also scaling the leg as well. And this is the first time that we really see the procedural potential of geometry nodes. Because here with the combine XYZ node, we can use a single value to manipulate the scale of one piece and also manipulate the location of a second piece based on the exact same value. 